everyone. This is Damian Eccles. And I am Davis Tabakis. And we want to welcome you to our very first episode of the Invisible Cities Companion Podcast. Yeah. When we were talking about doing this, we were just kind of kicking around the idea of like, you know, doing bonus material. You know, there's so much when you're exploring some of these places. You know, we did the very first episode on New Orleans and we did not even cover one half of oh, the yeah. things that we were talking about covering. So yeah. this was just another way to even get deeper into the, you know, into the place, the histories, the stories, the things that we love about it or that resonated with us, whatever it is, all things about the places that we love we wanted to bring you more information about that and yeah absolutely important. yeah yeah i mean because we're definitely going to eventually have to go back do another whole episode on yeah. just you know because this the, again there's so much to cover and you know in the future episode i see that you announced it today and we're we're, we're planning on doing new york city and that's going to have to be a multi-episode you know even just the manhattan alone never mind yeah. the 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 outskirts of 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 the different boroughs you know yeah so. i mean i i think we could easily take at least probably four or five hour long episodes to cover everything you know not even everything about new york but just the stuff that resonates with us the stuff we love, like our own personal histories of where we lived and why these places mean you know so much to us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, you could probably honestly probably do an entire series just on new york alone oh yeah well i mean originally that was kind of one of the things that we were talking about and it's like well let's let's you know I mean, this could be so much more broader and so much more bigger, you know, yes. within the different kind of yeah. places that we could visit and go and go look around, you know. And um, the it was so much fun putting together. I mean, it was it was amazing. So it was like to be able to, you know, try to sprinkle in the culture of of of, of you know. Obviously, at this point, we've only done the New Orleans episode and the first one, but mm -hmm. you know, being able to sprinkle in a little bit of just the whole feeling of what that city is on top of visiting places that you were so knowledgeable about you know and, and it's like there's there's so much like on both ends of the spectrums there's so much good stuff and there's so much horrific stuff you know mm -hmm. when you're talking about like stuff from from older times like how this was like an important part you know during the slave trade era you know, stuff from that time all the way up until like all the devastation of Hurricane Katrina and all the lives lost and, and just, yeah. you know, the scars that it left on the city. Yes. You've got those horrible things in addition to these beautiful, amazing things. New Orleans is a really odd place like that. I didn't, I never really knew what to expect from it other than I knew that the just being filled with with music and and just and and uh different styles and 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 um like I knew that that was going to really affect me and I was but yet I didn't know that it was going to be exactly like I imagined it where it's like every street corner you turn there's music being played like when we go to um just when we're walking by the um I, I mean everywhere we walk but 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 there was that one point that we went by uh the crawdads and just like that band is just playing you know inside yes. the inside the restaurant over, you know? uh, over by cafe du monde yes yeah. yes yeah. and that was actually one of the questions that i was thinking of whenever we were talking about like doing this podcast one of the first things that popped into my head that i was wanting to ask you was how was new orleans different than you thought it was going to be or it, was it exactly like you thought it was going to be? Like, how, how did it compare to what you? Yeah, I, I, you know, it kind of compared to exactly what I kind of thought it was going to be. And, and but but more, you know what I mean? Like, like, I didn't know, I didn't realize how much I was going to fall in love with the city. I mean, it's literally the city that if I had, if I was wealthy, I would definitely have a place in New Orleans. I mean, you, you know, without a doubt. Um, um, and then be able to still have a place in New York. Um, it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. It just felt too that like the 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 culture of people were just so nice too everywhere yeah. we went around the French Quarter. Now, granted, we we were only in the French Quarter, but like everywhere we went, and I still didn't even see all of it. I didn't even go to Frenchman Street, you know, yes. and that which is a lot of music. That's the big part of the music, right? 
Park. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. Frenchman Street is, is one of the, these weird places, and, and that's one of the reasons that you have to come back so that we can go see that. Mm -hmm. Like, if you've never been to Frenchman Street, it's technically like, like just a, a hair outside of the French Quarter. Like, Technically, it would be in the neighborhood they call Bywater, but it's it, there's almost no distinction between the two because they're so close together. But if you when you're walking down the street, it's just like bar after bar after bar, like just back to back to back. And in every single one of these places, some of the most amazing music I have ever heard in my life is played in these places. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've walked into some of these some of these bars at like two o'clock in the afternoon and been the only person there and there would be a band on stage just playing putting everything they had yeah. into playing like it was a full house and they would sound better than anything I'd heard on the radio in the past couple of years mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and playing mm -hmm. like they're playing as if they're playing a stadium, you know, giving it all, yes. you know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Just notice that with the street performers and and mm -hmm. that. and and uh uh and huge credit to them. I mean, I you know try to credit them all in the video, or I did credit them all in the video, but it you know they made such a big part of that video, you know, by being able to uh, um, have them in there and and, yeah. and having that whole vibe, you know, happening out through. And it uh, it kind of uh, reminds me a little bit too. There are so many ties and and like connections between New Orleans and New York. Like in a lot of ways, it reminds me of the the best street musicians that you would see in certain locations in New York. Like, for example, when you would go into like the, the you know, the, the train station at 34th Street. Mm -hmm. That was always one of those locations where like the best of the best would be. Yeah, yeah Union Square train station, yep. too. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So there's yeah. that. And did you know? like the one of my favorite movies of all time it's about the history of new york gangs of new york yes. like I, I was actually watching it today again i've probably seen it at least 20 times yeah. with leonardo dicaprio in it but the guy who wrote the book that that movie was based on also wrote another book about the french quarter and new orleans oh really yes now did you, you and you read the book or I have you, not read, you the, read book. the book yet. Yeah. 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 Went, well, when I was in prison, uh, we could not get any books that had the title gang in them of course. in any way whatsoever, even if it was like a history book about yeah. the gangs of New York. Yeah. And then after I got out here, it was like I couldn't really read like I used to. Something yeah. happened to me when I remember you telling me that. Yeah. I just yeah. couldn't like whether it was not being able to focus on, uh, and all that. Yeah. Yeah. But that Which was also on that was one of the reasons that traveling became so important to me like like after i never in a million years thought i would leave new york yeah but whenever i did like i came yes. here and i ended up falling in love with new orleans like as as much as i ever was with new york you yeah know, i loved new york like it was a person i know it, i i know i know it was i didn't was, you know i honestly didn't think that you would be able to fall in love with any place as much as new york city itself uh until like you know once you move there you're just texting me and and and, and you know just telling me about just how magical and amazing and everything that that city was and then until i got there then i'm like oh i know exactly what you're talking yes. about you know but yeah. for a, uh, for a while after we left new york i felt kind of like i felt like i didn't have any roots you know like new yeah. york it was the only home that i'd ever really known you know, especially yeah. since I got out of prison, it was the only place I ever felt like I belonged. Mm -hmm. And I never in a million years would have seen myself leaving there. So whenever I did leave for a, for a, quite a while, I just felt like I was just kind of blowing in the wind. And I yeah. stayed on the road almost constantly. I would have never learned to drive if I would have not Absolutely. left New York. You know, so many people There's like no point of driving when you're here, you know. Yes. So, you know, we have friends that are that were born and raised in New York that n have never gotten their driver's license in their lives because you don't need it there. Yeah. Yeah. But whenever I left, I got my license and I started just driving all over the United yeah. States. You know, I drove all the way to the Grand Canyon and back on a permit yeah. before I ever even got my permanent license. Yeah. And part of what I, you know, like I was saying a second ago about how when I first got out and I couldn't read anymore. 
like, so it was hard for me to take in information like that. But one of the things I realized is how traveling, even if you're traveling in a country, especially a country as, you know, one country, but especially one as big as the United States, where it's still filled with all different kind of cultures and traditions and climates and all this stuff, you still learn just by traveling around and exposing yourself. To oh, absolutely. Things. Absolutely. One of my favorite things about growing up would be like walking you know, down the streets and, and peeking into people's kind of like backyards and seeing their laundry hanging or just, you know, seeing the different ways of life between each each building and each place, you know, and uh, yeah. and, and um, you you would you would you would pick up a lot on that, you know, by seeing the way that people just lived, you know, yes. It also, it, it kind of gave me the ability to, to, you know, so many things, you know, this sounds kind of weird in, in a certain way, but so many things that helped me survive when I was in prison, like one of the things that I absolutely loved was, well, there was this organization that bought a bunch of DVDs and gave them to the prison and they would just show these DVDs over and over and over. Mm -hmm. So one of, one of them was the Mothman Prophecies. Mm. And they showed that movie. I can't even count how many times they showed it when I was in there. And it had a profound impact on me. To this day, it ranks up there. You know, it and Games of New York are two of my absolute favorite movies of all time. But, you know, I started being able to do things once I could drive and got out here, like actually go to the, it was almost like making a pilgrimage going to the locations that they talk about in the movies, like just trying to connect with, with more of the energy of it, seeing where all this stuff originated and happened. Yeah. That's one of the things I can't wait to do with you too. Absolutely. To Absolutely. Well, I was going to ask you, so it, it, was that a documentary style movie or was that a, an actual movie movie? Like movie. The, the, the you Mothman. haven't seen it yet? I still haven't seen it. No. Oh. See, here's the thing, Damien. Here's the thing. I'll never forget. We went to that Mexican restaurant by the movie theater that we used to always go to, and that. And um, I knew a little bit about the moth about the Mothman prophecy, or, or you know, just about the the history of it, but just not really anything other than just knowing about it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And we we were sitting down eating, and then you told me everything about it, and I was like, oh my god, I didn't know. I didn't even know about the bridge or any of that stuff. You yeah. know. So yes. I was like, yeah, but then I seen that you went there. So this is a question I want to ask you is that, um, which, which was funny because you started talking about it before I even asked you, but but do, do you think that it was because of all the traveling that you've done since you moved? Because you've been a ton of places out through the US, right? And even even before even driving, you know, you, you've been a bunch of places, whether it was a book tour or something else like that. But um, um. But since you and Lori started kind of traveling and doing that stuff, is that what kind of started building this this concept and this idea for Invisible Cities? That's, that's so just wrapping up this first yeah. episode of our podcast, um, yeah. like we both just want to thank everybody for for basically riding shotgun with us. Yes. Um, yeah. Adventure. And thank you. So many people have checked out that uh, our first episode of Invisible Cities and the um the, the the it's been amazing the the feedback and everything so the thank you so much if you've taken the time to watch it yes thank you so, so much for the support and love and everything else that you've given us and shown us through everything that we've done whether it was art shows or whenever you when we were designing the t-shirts with talent on them all of that yep. sort of stuff and even now following us into this new venture we really truly I mean, I can't even articulate how much we appreciate the love and support that you guys have shown us through. It's been, the yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. And, and with the support too, just, just to put it out there, if you're not already on Patreon, we have a, we have, we have a new Patreon. Damien has a Patreon. I have my personal Patreon, but we have a new Patreon that is literally just to fund this project. And that's uh Patreon slash invisible cities. And by supporting us there, it, if you do support us, we the, all that money just goes towards uh, travel. Most importantly, travel and then and then equipment 
to um because l- this whole the first episode was all shot in an iphone so you know which was amazing in itself yeah I, mean, I yeah. cannot believe kind of how incredible yeah, it what you can do nowadays with these phones yeah. it's incredible well, Perla did a really good job as yeah. a camera person too like when well, i was looking great. at that video it looked incredibly professional she's got to come out with us when we're in new well yeah. hopefully she'll have time to come out with us when we're in, when we're in new york you can uh, tell she knew what she knew what she yeah i know so i kept on telling i was like these shots are so great the way you're panning and you're going uh-huh. down like, oh, yeah, things. Yes. It's like you know that's yes. perfect so yeah thank you everybody so much yes. so much and talk to you soon yeah we'll talk to you soon